Hello, it's Martin and you join me on my European road trip in the Hyundai Ioniq 5. We pick up right where we left off in the previous episode, where I got to the very eastern border of Netherlands to a little town called Enschede. Admittedly, the progress has been a bit slow going. I had to cross the channel and then the speed limits in the Netherlands are fairly low. However, today I need to make some serious progress. I'm picking up a friend from Cologne and I'm driving to Munich for the IAA Motor Show. So let's see how the Ionic 5 does at faster speeds on the German Autobahn, where I have to cover about 480 miles or 772 kilometers. The car is ready. I had it plugged into a residential AC charger overnight after I arrived. But for all intents and purposes, we are starting with the full battery. And yesterday I had a look at a better route planner to suggest suitable charging stops. A better route planner is a very powerful piece of software. You basically just tell it what car you have and where you want to go from, like Google Maps. And at that point, it goes and does its thing. It's similarly to Tesla's route planner, it takes into account weather conditions, how fast you will be driving, the energy consumption profile of your vehicle, charging speeds, charge availability, etc. And it spits out where you should stop, how much energy you will have left in the battery when you arrive, and how long you will need to stay to make your next leg. By the way, all of the functionality I used is free. If you want to, I can make a dedicated video on how to get the most out of a better route planner in the future. I just rerun the plan and it's predicting a very similar route to yesterday with four charging stops in total. By the way, I set Ionity as my most preferred charging network as I have Ionity Power, where I pay about 11 pounds a month and it gives me substantially cheap rates per kilowatt hour. So it makes sense to take advantage of that. And I also have Fastnet and Electra as preferred as I know they are very reliable and good charging networks. So what I'm saying is that if you use the default settings, your route may look different even in an identical vehicle. A better route planner also supports CarPlay so you can see all the information in the built-in infotainment system. But we will do it a bit old school where I will just use Google Maps one leg at a time and have ABR pre-running in the background and check with it once I am charging. The obvious reason being I want to show you what it works when you just have the free tier of Able Truth Planner instead of paying for premium, which then unlocks the CarPlay functionality. And the unofficial reason being that the OBD dongle I have is not compatible, which I did not realize until this morning. But it's all nice and simple anyways. You can always see the charging plan right on your phone. And it's saying that the first stop will be an Ionity where I will get to with 35% state of charge. If you're wondering why the distances are so low between charges is because I set my cruising speed at 100 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour for the unrestricted sections of the autobahn. Given it's a Sunday today, I'm not expecting much traffic. And I can just click share to map and I will just use Google Maps through CarPlay as normal. So resetting the trip computer, exactly 9.30 in the morning. I'm delayed already because I wanted to leave much earlier than that, but it is what it is and off we go. I'm also, of course, going to be running air conditioning at a comfortable temperature because this is a normal trip. I'm not trying to hypermile at all. Just like before, starting out in eco mode at these lower speeds, it makes no difference. And it just means this all-wheel drive Ionic 5 is a bit more efficient because it cruises only using the rear motor with the front physically disconnected using a clutch. And what a beautiful day for a trip. 18 degrees Celsius so far, almost no clouds in the sky, sunny, couldn't wish for anything better. And I'm officially into Germany, still just on some country roads, so doing 100 kilometers per hour. Finally, joining the Autobahn out of eco mode into normal. I only have 126 kilometers to cover, 400 kilometers of range, 93% still, so we can just go for it. At 150 kilometers per hour, on these silky smooth roads, you can barely feel that we are driving. This is lovely. I can get used to this. 160. I think 160 will be a good cruising speed. And in 160, the highway driving assist still works as well. Of course, if I need to pass someone a bit quicker, I can give it just a little bit of a nudge. Interestingly, even the auto lane change works at these speeds. That's quite nice. It's amazing that after traveling a while at this pace, 130 feels downright like snail space. It's 10.30 in the morning and I'm already stuck in a traffic jam. My luck, but I can go back to letting HDA do most of the driving now. 
Thankfully, the roads didn't grind to a complete halt. About half an hour later, I approached the services with a clear sign showing EV chargers are present on site, and I could also see the live availability in Google Maps. Not that I am worried. Due to the slow progress, I still have over 40% in the battery, but I pull over nevertheless to use the bathroom and stretch my legs before I continue the trip, so the car might as well be plugged in. There was a 13 minute pit stop up to 80%, so I actually have a lot more charge than I need, but I'm expecting this to become a pattern throughout the trip. The car charges so quickly that you actually don't have enough time to do what you need to do during your rest breaks. By the way, the next waypoint is Cologne city center to pick up my friend. And of course, straight into more traffic. friend picked up and back on the motorway from Cologne continuing towards Frankfurt even though lorries I believe are not officially meant to be on the roads it seems like everybody is traveling all across the country also on these stretches of motorways the speed limit has been about 120 kilometers per hour so not doing anything crazy the Ionic 5 is beautifully refined HDA is doing its thing on the electric side of things, keep in mind I overcharged at the last stop. So I take advantage of Eddie sitting next to me, he won't ride shotgun for free after all, and I get him to look at ABRP and manually add a suitable charging stop based on the current situation. And yeah, we will press on a bit further than initially expected to get to a fastnet with a lower state of charge because there is no point in arriving to a charger with still half of the battery left. As you can see, there is a lot of congestion. We are in standstill traffic yet again. So if the efficiency improves further because we can't drive at 130 kilometers per hour and above, we may be able to skip the first fastnet stop and just go straight to the next one. Oh, nice. There's also some other charger right on this corner, so we will see. We seem to have plenty of options. So there are chargers here at Obi, but Obi looks a bit dead. Actually, it's a Sunday, of course, all the shops are closed. So let's go for Fastnet, the premium electricity. Oh, Wasserstoffstation, hydrogen. There are spaces available, but given it's quite busy and not a single dedicated stall is free, I end up sharing a charger with an electric mini countryman. Well, it is what it is. 35% in the battery. And if we go into the trip meter for the last leg of the journey, yes, yeah, since the charge at Ionity, it took quite a while, 150 kilometers in over two hours. I would have hoped for better in Germany. Just like on my previous trip, we will use the Electroverse app. Plug in, ramping up power. The concern is that with the Mini being plugged in as well, these Fastnet chargers, which are manufactured by Alpetronic, the hyperchargers, which can do up to 300 kilowatts of peak power, it will be splitting that power between the two cars. So yeah, we are now limited to only 150. Just went round, quick pit stop. If we look at the charging status, we are up to 91%, 92. So we in fact overtook the Mini and we have more than enough range to make it to the next station, which will be Ionity, which should be a little bit cheaper than 72 euro cents per kilowatt hour. And if we look at the charging curve, yeah, it was more of a line. Just like with the previous stop, the theme of this trip is that I overcharged. 20 minutes was way too long for the Ionic 5. Interestingly, as we were leaving the area, we noticed some Tesla superchargers, some V3 superchargers, and you would think 250 kilowatts of power, that's more than enough for an Ionic 5, which peaks at about 220, 230. But keep in mind, those are 400 volt based, whereas this uses an 800 volt battery architecture. And that means that even when we were splitting power with the Mini next to us, we were getting a faster rate because with the superchargers, we would need to rely on the onboard motor inverter booster thing to get the voltage up, which on these Ionic 5s is limited to about 110, 120-ish kilowatts off the top of my head. 
we see some quite unusual views as we pass through Frankfurt. Overall though, this leg of the journey is pretty free-flowing. Still a lot of traffic with the occasional roadworks, but not too bad, which means we get to the next stop by 4 p.m. Look at this. Right. And superchargers and Allego chargers. 26% in the battery, so now that we have extended our journey, it actually worked out quite well. And we are using the cheap electricity. Let's plug in. Four chargers available. This is stall number two. Continue. Yes. 39 euro cents per kilowatt hour. Let's pay the pre-authorization. And given the weather is good, we drove a decent pace and we are in low state of charge. I'm expecting over 200 kilowatts of charging power. 140, 150, 160, 170, 80, 90. Come on, 200. Is that it? I mean, it's not bad, I'm not complaining, but where's my 220 kilowatts? To 80% in 14 minutes. That's what electric cars should be like. We can go to Burger King, nice and healthy. There's our superchargers, deceptively V4 dispensers, but I'm fairly sure they are still 400 volt based V3 charging cabinets, so not suitable for us. And now that we are working to get some food, we can still monitor the charge on the app and we plugged in with, what was it, 30%? 20 something. 20, and now we are already up to almost 40% in three minutes. Pretty good going, still 211 kilowatts taking from the charger. Without exaggeration, we literally went in, got the food, no faffing about, 19 minutes and five seconds and we are already up to 88%, 89% now, still taking 50 kilowatts, so not too bad at the top end. But yeah, we will need to do a stop anyways. The alternative is driving at like 70, 75 miles per hour. So we will see how the traffic situation is. But yeah, I'm expecting one more, probably Ionity stop on the way down to Munich. Not much to report on with this leg of the journey. I may or may not have had the lunch on the move while we were stuck in some roadworks. Managed to hit the top speed of the Ionic 5, which is about 190 kilometers per hour on one stretch of road. And yeah, given it was generally slow going, we were able to push past the originally planned stop. Now finally to proper low state of charge, only 15% in the battery still, 43 kilometers of range estimated. And we are turning off the motorway in one kilometer to charge at an Ionity station. So let's see the journey stats. 225 kilometers covered on this leg, quite high average consumption, but finally some decent time, only two hours, 15 minutes. Oh, and it's the Red ID3 we just passed. Rinse and repeat. Ionity up, 14 stalls available, no queues. This one is number six. Agree to the price of 39 euro cents per kilowatt hour. Pay. By the way, you don't have to use the app on these stations as you can see there is a contactless card reader which happens to be broken in this case so let's ignore that the app is highly recommended even if you don't subscribe to any of the packages because you can see the live charging details even if you have a vehicle which is not connected to the internet like the case of the Zionic 5 as the app connectivity from Hyundai has expired ramping up and once again just like before I'm expecting 200 kilowatts minimum nice and consistent lovely service station lots of charging options here i don't know whether this is legally required in germany for competition purposes but we've got the ionity tesla superchargers alego and just by the shell petrol station some in-house shell chargers as well and the shell and the alego use the alpitronic hyperchargers so all should be nice and reliable it's having the korean siesta only six seven ish kilowatts this usually happens for about a minute it's just the battery management system recalibrating and checking the voltages of all the individual cells and if you just let it do its thing it will run back up in a second alternatively if you need to get going there is no worry you can unplug and start driving straight away anyways we have been here for about 20 ish minutes again went to the bathroom took some pictures of the chargers for you and now we are already up to 85 
100%. So good to continue the last leg of the journey directly to the hotel, where we will take a look at the total trip summary, costs, etc. It's only about 60 kilometers to the hotel in Munich, so with the beautiful sunset ahead of us and the evening rush hour seemingly over, I can let the electrons do their work for a bit. Even then, we arrive at the destination with about 70% in the battery, more than enough to use the car around town without having planned for any overnight charging. As for the overall experience, let me summarize as I see this lovely lucid air drive by. It took nearly 9 hours of pure driving time to cover the 770 kilometers, averaging about 90 kilometers per hour. Keep in mind that was determined entirely by the traffic situation. Not once did I have to hang about in lane 1, drafting behind lorries or slowing down to limp it to a charger. Speaking of charging, despite traveling during the holidays in the middle of summer, there wasn't a single queue nor any broken chargers. In fact, the longest charging stop took 22 minutes, but on average I was only stopped for 18 and a half minutes at a time. I will leave all the stats on the screen, so feel free to pause the video to scrutinize them, but even had I been in a car with a combustion engine, I wouldn't have been able to drive any faster. If I really wanted to, I could have possibly stopped only a couple of times, shaving off 30 minutes from the total journey time, including charging at best. And that's where I'm going to leave it. If you are still not convinced, make sure to subscribe to not miss a video on how the Ionic 5 handles driving twice the distance with more optimized charging stops.